is Steve Myers. Hippies. Hippies is Steve Myers. Thank you, Madam Contest Chair. You said that very quietly. I'm going to need some crowd help at some different points in this because I want us to kind of get into this topic. Hippies. Anyone recently see the phenomenon that kind of blew through Reno? People headed up <laughs> north <laughs> somewhere. Burning. Burning Man, Burning Man. Got some burners in the room? Hey, don't clap. <laughs> <laughs> How would you best describe the clientele? Oh, now they're clientele. This is not a love and peace in the in the middle of the desert anymore. This is big, big money business. Oh. What's what's the price for a ticket this year? Four fifty five dollars. There you go, three eighty-five, and they got sixty-five thousand people. Where are you going with that money? I think you could launch a rocket to Mars here. <laughs> Those people, and they help our community quite a bit here, but their characterization socially would probably best be. Hippies. That was very humble and politically correct of you, but don't worry, they don't have representatives. They're a scattered <laughs> faction of our society. You can say it really loud. Hippies! <laughs> Let me tell you a little about the hippies. <clears throat> in our country, our hippies, it came in our post-World War II. World, World, World War II, we learned how to fabricate things. We learned how to storm beaches. We learned how to get the American dream out there in terms of military and our idealisms in other countries. And when the war ended, what were we left to do? Well, we turned that same gung-ho-ness and, and ability to produce and manufacture into marketing our own national American dream. We had, to, we had to have consumers for that production. So we had this American dream rolling out. You need a car, you need a radio, you need a TV the size of a mini Winnebago. <laughs> and the white picket fences, they sold like hotcakes. And that, as that rolled out, a certain homogeneity came through our society. Everyone kind of had the same dream. The playing field was level. Sure, we had our little Hollywood stars, the Sinatras, and, but in general, the American public, they leveled themselves out considerably what their expectations for their life was going to be here. We had been the result of thousands of years of, of European religions beating on us a, a, a manner of living, manner of looking at our lives here. And the, the great results of those were uh, the Crusades, witch burnings, uh, rampant racism, the Holocaust, and all these other PR nightmares that I don't want to get into. So we were looking for something different. And in that age, which happened toward the 60s, an age when I was born by chance, out came a rebellion from that. And re rebellion was instigated by a lot of external thinking coming in. So a lot of the Eastern religions came in. It was, it was a lot of the karate people went over there and saw the amazing things that they were doing. They started bringing the Japanese, the Chinese, the Okinawan. Then religiously, the Hindus, the first swamis and yogis, they landed on our shore and started their schools. And they had some great ideas. And, our, and our, our hippie culture grew up with on some basic, basic ideas. There's so many, I wrote them down. Politically, they saw the humans as a family. They saw us having a chance to have peace. There was a sanctity to life. Ecologically, they wanted to respect nature. They saw us as an extension of nature, respect it, treat our well, wildlife and, and not litter, all these other beautiful things. Economically, they, they promoted self-sufficiency, barter systems, and s developing of skills. Now, the factories, were, uh, they were pumping out cars and toilet seats and all these amazing things you do in a factory. Uh, they, suddenly, the hand skills, the art, art skills, those were uh, it developed in the, into the hippie culture, and they became great artisans there. Socially, music family, social gatherings, tolerance for people's differences. These came in. Personally, they wanted to be authentic. They didn't want to be the cookie cutters that the, the government and the media was all trying to force us into because it was easier to, to rule us, to, uh, to drive our morals, to drive our purchases, 
and make us all consumers. Not when you're authentic. Not when you're tie-dyeing your own clothes <laughs> and threading your hair down to here. And romantically, marriage. We learned about marriage here. We learned about the this fulfillment of the spouse, tantric. These, these are things that came in here. Now what did the hippies do with it? They tried to skim off the cool, the fun, the sex, the wild parties. They took the deeper spiritual and meditative ideas and potentials that, that were taught from the East, and they tried to short circuit that through their <coughs> LSD and math and their favorite little weed we know as pot. pot. <laughs> All right. She's familiar. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was their downfall. Or we were built as these human computers with this dopamine here as our our ruling chemical, and the things that inspire dopamine motivate people. So if you do a good deed, walk a little lady across the street, or come to your family, that dopamine gets stimulated. You have a good activity, you feel a good reward. It's a good system that helps society flow well. Now, if you short circuit that, and you're able to take this or, or shoot that and get that same wonderful do dopamine sensation, what happens? You're not motivated. You're not outwardly going. You're more laid back. You're, and as a force, the hippies kill themselves off socially, politically. And their marijuana, that, that was a commonality of all the protest groups here. The government couldn't shut them down because of the First Amendment shut them down because they're all smoking pot, right? <laughs> so the government turned down a lot of the anti-PR against the Vietnam War by focusing in on the hippies' favorite pastimes. But with what can we learn? This is 30 and 40 years later. Those same great ideas that shook them out of being the little drones that, that our society wanted to make are valid for us, politically, being more tolerant, ecologically, taking care of our, our environment, socially, having more, get rid of this isolation, let's gather more. And personally, going back to being authentic, going back to showing the world what we can actually produce as an individual. I hope you come away from this, this talk here a little more tolerant toward those hippies and a little more inviting to your inner hippie. Hmm.